My favorite part about working with jellyfish are all of the opportunities for a young scientist. I'm able to go out to sea and find things that are new to science almost every trip. And that's because jellyfish science is a relatively new field. As a young biologist, I was being trained, you know, and I looked through the tide pools, and I felt like all the cool projects had been done already by some guy 50 years ago. Uh, but not so with jellyfish. With the Monterey Bay Aquarium, we have a lot of different kinds of jellyfish on display, and we don't always rely on wild-caught collections to, uh, to fill the exhibits. In fact, most of the jellies you see here are ones that we've grown ourselves. We've got several laboratories uh, hidden around the building. We grow currently 25 different kinds of jellyfish, and it's mostly our jellyfish farming uh, practices that are filling the exhibits these days. So we're not often uh, relying on wild-caught collections uh, as much as we used to. The coolest thing about jellies, I think, has not yet been shown or discovered. Uh, as you know, jellyfish don't have eyes or a brain or a nose or even a heart, but they're still able to address all of life's problems even without having them. What are life's problems? Well, how do I eat? How do I avoid being eaten? How do I reproduce? Jellyfish have figured all of that stuff out without needing a brain or a circulatory system or anything like that. So if you're thinking about going out and becoming a marine biologist, hey, look into jellyfish, or even better, the deep sea, because it's uh, wide open for new scientists. Doesn't want their own secret laboratory filled with things that nobody understands. It's awesome.